Well, I think we've looked at just about everything we can look at at the vantage point area. And then, of course, uh, we've been looking at the utilities that uh, started with our look at the powerhouse on Water Street. So now we're going to go up uh, Water Street and see what there is there. Today, it looks like this. Uh, not a whole lot here except for parking and storage. This is looking at the Google Street View map uh, and probably not quite up to date. But it's, uh, it's similar to this anyway. This is what it looked like in 1867. And there wasn't even a lot back then uh, on Water Street that was east of Military Street. You can see where Military Street is. The arrow there is pointing to the Military Street Bridge. Which is this bridge right here in this photograph. It would also appear that they're putting the finishing touches on this bridge. Quite a unique structure. All wood. We're very fortunate to have a picture of this bridge because, well, let's face it, in 1867, there weren't a lot of people going around with their smartphones taking pictures. The largest building that's set on East Water Street is actually on the corner of Military and Water. This building here where the arrow is. And here is a picture of that building. Uh, this was at that time called the Merchant Exchange Block. And the building hosts several different uh, businesses inside of it. If you look closely, you can see where it says drugstore or drugs. This was Wastel Drugs and it faced Military Street and it was there for many, many years. Here's a better picture of it. There's a couple of other interesting things in this picture. One is this horse and buggy uh, that's actually a vendor selling supplies to the drugstore. You can see on the side, if you look very closely, that it's selling extracts. And this also gives you a very good look at one of the very, very early streetcars. Here's another photograph. You can see Westdale Drugs there. And of course, on the corner now, you see the uh, Foster shoe store, and that was there for many years, over 50 years. Also in that same building uh, with the Thompson Furniture and Undertaking. And I wouldn't be surprised if he not only made the furniture, but made the coffins for the Undertaking business as well. And as we move a little further west in the building, we see William Cannon. Uh, originally, I had information to say that this was a printer binder. Uh, may have been some canon that was that, but uh, during this time period with William, I have since found information that he was a grocer. He had several locations, and if you look real close at these windows, uh, it looks like uh, they're advertising their produce. It looks like pickles, uh, possibly pigs and peaches, and uh, in the, one of the uh, informational books I have, it says that he was a fish and a fruit dealer. And later on, it said that there was a grocery store there. So I'm pretty sure uh, that was pretty much a grocery store business. And when they expanded in the building, they probably just expanded their selection of groceries. And for those of you that still aren't sure where this actually was, here's a more current picture. This is where the old National Bank, Michigan National Bank, used to be, and then later Bank America. And now I understand there's going to be a hotel there, so we'll see. We won't go into everything that was at this location because we did that in video number 43. So if you want to know more about it, just refer back to that video. Here's another photograph of the same building. And I think this is where I got the idea that uh, it was a, a printing and binding company because that's what it says on the side of the building. But I think this was later on. And uh, it may not even had anything to do with William Keenan because uh, you can see his sign is um, kind of washed out there. It's not quite as distinctive as it once was. You could still have a business there because if we look down below and we look at this awning, we can make out at least the word seeds and who knows what else they were selling there as well. Other than the Merchant Exchange, there wasn't much else on East Water Street. Uh, There's a couple of factories there as you can see and uh, a salt mill there on the end. But that was about it. Also notice that the uh, Pier Market uh, Railroad Bridge is not there yet. But you can see in this illustrated map of 1894 that the Railroad Bridge is there now. And alongside of it is the old powerhouse. This is the old wooden powerhouse that uh, 
preceded the uh, brick one with the turret that we looked at in a previous video. Something else I found interesting as well, if you look directly, almost directly across the street from the old powerhouse, you see that there was a railroad roundhouse there. This is about where it would be located today. And then just to uh, the east of that, uh, alongside of that roundhouse area, and almost directly across the street from the uh, train bridge, was a uh, quite a large area of uh, wetland, uh, marsh wetland. And how do I know that? Because of this map here. You can see the roundhouse on the uh, upper left. And then, of course, the oblong there uh, figure to the right, uh, which says uh, Wet Marsh. I love these illustrated maps because it uh, helps us to understand where everything was. For example, there at the end of Court Street where the air was, you can see the Pier Marquette Railroad Station. And, of course, this is what it looked like in the photograph. Then, of course, uh, uh, just to the east of that and on the opposite side of Court Street was the McMoran uh, Elevator and Mill. As we move a little further west up Water Street, we come to the Campbell Mill. And uh, this, uh, this mill wasn't a grain mill or elevator or anything like that. It was a manufacturer of wood products. And it's set on the southwest corner of 3rd Street and Water Street. The Campbell Mill was a manufacturer of sash, doors, blinds, moldings, interior finish, all kinds of things, even for the office, the store, the bank fixtures, stair builders. Uh, and also, they were a manufacturer of buggy and carriage bodies. So they had their hand in everything. Here we have an advertisement for Campbell's. Uh, kind of uh, basically says pretty much what I've been telling you. It doesn't say anything about buggies, but uh, in the city directories it did say that it made buddy, uh, buggy bodies. Buddy, buddy, buggy, buddy, buddy. Say that a couple times fast. Buggy bodies. I was interested in what it had to say at the bottom. Uh, factory at the corner of Water 3rd and Pine Street. Well, I know it was on the corner of uh, Water and 3rd, but I... For some reason, I didn't think it went all the way to Pine Street, but because uh, Water Street goes at an angle, it does. It took up all the space between Water Street and Pine Street. So it's a pretty good size. By 1903, the building had new occupants, and that was the Edison Theater. And this was a theater that basically was a stage theater. It was a little before moving picture times, although there were some Nickelodeon types things back then, but uh, this was mainly stage plays. And it didn't last very long, because by 1911, uh, Edison Theater was no longer there, nor was the building any longer there. It was torn down. There's a very rare picture of the Edison Theater. As a matter of fact, it's the only picture I've ever seen of it. And you can see it's the original building, but they've, uh, they've renovated it somewhat to, to make it a little bit classier. They added that little uh, turret to the top. And they took out some of those windows and uh, changed the front somewhat. But it's pretty interesting. And I'll expand on this so you can uh, read the letter if you like. Well, maybe I should read it for you. It's kind of hard to see. And it goes to Jefferson Butler in Detroit. Dear Sir, replying to your favor of May 8th, would say that I settled with the Starline people for the scenery and hold the receipt for same, respectfully yours. Uh, looks like E.J. McCormick or something to that effect. It's not the content of the letter that's important, but certainly the picture. The picture is very historical. I'm sure he had no idea that when he wrote that letter that we'd be looking at it all these years later. A modern theater in a thriving city. Here's a postcard looking east, and you can see Water Street and Military Street there. In the foreground, that tall building, that would be the Miso Company, and later became the People's Bank. Then you can see the Merchant Exchange Building across the street from it. And as you go down, uh, looking down Water Street, you see there's uh, businesses that are popping up there uh, as the years went by. There was different businesses. 
There was a broom factory, there was a lime company, there was even a, a bowling alley called Victoria Bowling Alley. But I don't have pictures of any of those, so let's just uh, look at what I do have pictures of. At 323-325 Water uh, Street, uh, which would be uh, about right here at this location, in this parking lot you're looking at. Uh, but at one time, it was the Huron Automotive Bill and Electric Company. And uh, they were dealers in automobiles, electrical supplies, and there were also electrical contractors that worked out of there. This would have been one of the earliest automobile dealerships in Port Huron. Ernest Ortenberger was the president of the company, and George Oakham was the vice president of the company, and his wife was the secretary. In 1907, automobiles were still pretty new. Matter of fact, Ortenberger is, of course, the one we recognize as the uh, harness dealer that had the white horse on Military Street. Uh, he was in the harness business, but I think he was hedging his bets and decided to, to go into the automobile business as well. Eventually, Ortenberger would go back to the harness business and uh, Mr. Yoakum would start his own dealership on Military Street and we've seen uh, his dealership in previous videos. I told you it was an early time for automobile dealers. And I was quite surprised in the 1907 directory when I saw this. Beard and Campbell of all companies was an automobile dealer. I didn't know that. And there was two other ones as you can see, one being the one we've been looking at here in Automobile and Electrical Company, and the other one was Pre's Auto Company. By 1924, there was about uh, 15 dealerships uh, in Port Huron, automobile dealerships, not counting the uh, five dealerships that sold nothing but trucks. Quite a bit transpired in a short period of time. And of course, Mr. Yoko went on to become a very successful auto dealer. I found this business card for Huron Auto, uh, Automobile and Electrical Company. Uh, and of course, uh, here it tells you the type of cars they sold. They were agents for the Northern Silent Touring Car, and uh, Oldsmobile with Cadillac and Pope Waverly. Now, I've never heard of Pope Waverly. I'm going to have to look that up. You thought I was kidding, didn't you? I really did look it up. And here it is, Pope Waverly, electrics. It was an electric car. And I guess that would go along really well with Huron Automobile and Electrical Company. And uh, this one shows a, a delivery vehicle. But here's an actual photograph of a, a little sedan model. Pope Waverly, who knew? And a lady driving. That had to be rare during that period of time. The other car in the car, the Northern Silent Touring Car, uh, during this period of time, which would be about 1907, uh, this is when Northern uh, opened up their factory in Port Huron, so perhaps that's uh, why they were handling it. And one last thing before we, we leave this business, uh, it says automobiles to rent by the hour. Not by the day, mind you, but by the hour. Right near Huron Automobile and Electrical Company was the Port Huron Bolt Company, which you can see in this photograph here. The tall uh, building uh, that you see in the foreground, that would have been actually on the south side of Water Street, so you're looking across the street at Port Huron Bolt Company. And in the background, you can see the uh, ferry, Port Huron Sarnia Ferry, the Hiawatha uh, at dock. In this photograph here, we can see the gray stormer on its way to Sarnia. And if we look down here, we can see that there's now a refrigerator shop uh, on Water Street. Uh, Port Huron is progressing, no longer having the ice boxes. It says refrigerators, you can make that out, then it says, uh, look like Mills Elliott. I can't make out the last word though. But a nice historical picture. And you can also see a small freighter in the background. As we go further up uh, Water Street, as we get closer to Military Street, uh, right behind the bank, this used to be Southeastern Michigan Gas. Uh, but before that, oh, back in the 20s, uh, this is what it looked like. 
William McGarry had a wholesale fruit and produce uh, store there. And you can see it in uh, this picture here. And then uh, to the left of that, uh, that was owned by uh, Howard Furniture Store. And you can see all their delivery trucks parked out front. I think it was used mainly just for storage. Howard Furniture actually had their uh, showroom across the street on Military Street. And they had a rear entrance that went out onto Water Street. And that's where these delivery trucks would uh, pull up to and, and load up for their customers. Every once in a while, I surprised myself. Uh, I remember I told you about uh, there used to be a bowling alley here, Victoria Bowling. And I had no idea. I, had, I did think I had a picture of it. And, but I do. And it's right here. It's not, uh, at this time, it wasn't called Victoria Bowling. It was just called Recreation. Uh, I don't think there's any other words that went with it. In the city, city directory, it was listed as Recreation. And uh, this was a bowling alley, and I'm sure this was what uh, where Victoria Bowling was. Not only did it have bowling, but it also had pool tables and who knows what else in there for entertainment. So I was glad to find that out. After the bowling alley and before Southeastern Michigan Gas Company, it was an A&P supermarket, a grocery store, and you can see it here as we zoom in on it. That pretty much takes care of uh, East uh, Water Street, uh, east of Military Street anyway. The uh, northeast corner and the southeast corner we've looked at in previous videos, so uh, we won't be looking at that in this video. And uh, in our next video, join me and uh, we may look at a couple more things on uh, this side of uh, Military Street, uh, perhaps uh, 3rd or 4th Street that we haven't looked at. And then we'll go across Military Street and, and uh, start on the uh, Water Street west of uh, Military.